Episode 9, The Odyssey Promise and the Curious Case of the Stakeholders. I will preface this conversation with the fact that I am an exuberant and enthusiastic fan of Elite Dangerous, both in its original form and the first big expansion, Horizons. When it came time to compete with other space simulation, open world games, Frontier Developments had to implement a first person update. Prior to this year, the one major factor holding Elite back was being locked to your ship or your planetary vehicle. From Star Citizen to X4 and even No Man's Sky, the biggest competitors in this realm of MMO space games have on-foot gameplay. Though the folks behind Elite Dangerous have skipped over the spaceship interiors this time, Fans and space elites alike have been drooling over the ability to get out on foot and experience this world many of us are intimately familiar with at an entirely new scale. And it has been spectacular in both the amount of amazement and the amount of bewilderment. Elite Dangerous is the most polarizing gaming experience I have ever fallen into. Odyssey, as an expansion, is equal parts stunning and an abomination without clear explanation. Perhaps, and we will hold off mass speculation until more is made clear and the apology patches slow down a bit, stakeholders at Frontier Dev put an unnecessary amount of pressure on the Elite team to launch Odyssey and make some bucks. Unfortunately, this has resulted in a playground that causes awe and actual gameplay that breeds expletives. There is so much wrong with Elite Dangerous Odyssey in terms of actual function that this launch will be remembered as a joke in the near future. Or at least I hope it will. Luckily for Frontier, the team hard at work on Elite Dangerous, there is a mountain of adoration from the fans something that would be hard to outright topple with a simple, disastrous launch. Those flyers in the great vast blackness are part of what I can only describe as one of the most fervent and obsessive fandoms in all of gaming today. With Odyssey, their sculpted one-to-one -one replica of the Milky Way galaxy is only made more immersive in so many wonderful ways. However, being invited into a theme park at a time when all of the rides are broken and being forced to stop and stare without the exhilaration promised feels meticulously callous. Something that is either the birth of a worrisome trend from the developers or a crime scene worth investigating. This is the Odyssey promise and the curious case of the stakeholders. I am Wyatt Fawcett. Welcome to the first bite. Let's rewind a bit. Even though I could easily state that Elite Dangerous is one of my favorite games of all time, and the base game released for Windows PC back in December 2014, I only recently played it for the first time in February of this year. I was on the hunt for something to dive into fully. Through quarantine, I was able to do something that previously was out of reach for me as a gamer. I was able to finish games or play them so much I would get tired of them. I was getting bored. Sitting around in February, wistfully hoping something would drop into my lap that could get me excited, I sent delusions of grandeur into the ether. And by ether, I mean my friends and family Discord channel. Shortly after blatantly pining for a Firefly simulator or MMO, my brother asked if I'd ever played Elite Dangerous. So I checked Steam. It seems that I had purchased the game and all of its updates sometime just prior to launch, but had up until that point clocked precisely zero hours of time into the game. In all honesty, the game has never even been installed on any of my machines. Why hadn't I ever checked out this game? Perhaps the vastness or selling features of Elite Dangerous were never advertised in a way that caught my eye specifically, but more likely it has to do with my circle of gamers. Completely silent on the matter. It wasn't something I'd never heard of. I obviously wanted to play it at some point. I purchased it, after all. 
yet I knew little to nothing about what it had actually become, or what I had in store for me in the coming months. Since booting it up, and clearing the short and forgivable tutorial, and dusting off a joystick I found in the garage, I've put more than 300 hours into Elite Dangerous on Steam. For a brief window, it was all I can think or talk about, much to my partner's chagrin. This is the level of constant observation and adoration I have since grown to expect from those that play Elite Dangerous. Commanders are meticulous and crafty, incredibly helpful and passionately skeptical. Of all the fandoms I've had the pleasure of participating in, ED and my fellow commanders are the absolute friendliest. It is outstanding how kind and knowledgeable almost every player I've encountered is. Briefing is an active way of participating in the ecosystem of Elite, with bounties and pirating and illegal missions galore, but somehow even these commanders maintain a level of polite candor that I cannot ignore. The Odyssey promise felt to us, the Elite Dangerous Majority, like a statement from Frontier that they will not be left behind by other space exploration games that are currently making waves. They already had a theme park that we all wanted to play in. But now we could actually walk from ride to ride and soak everything up from a completely different perspective. I will take one moment aside right now and make this praise brief. The Elite Dangerous Background Simulation that keeps the entire populated area of the Milky Way system functioning and shifting like a living, breathing universe is an astounding achievement unmatched by nearly every other video game made. Mid-spring came around, and many Elite Dangerous players were given the opportunity to test the Odyssey expansion through a phased rollout alpha. It wasn't glamorous, and it was pretty rough at spots but the trust that Frontier would clean it up before launch didn't seem to waver throughout the alpha. Adding to that, it had felt like I had become obsessed with the world of Elite Dangerous at the absolute perfect time. So, it was then very concerning, and puzzling, when Frontier announced shortly after the alpha ended that the Odyssey expansion would launch proper in only a few weeks. There was an obvious mountain of things to fix, and the timeline just didn't add up. Someone, or a group by committee, looked at the numbers and decided that this major evolution of their franchise could be released in a state that makes professional developers look like amateurs. With the fiscal year ending in June for Frontier, it seems that the studio wanted their 21 numbers to be bolstered, which makes a lot more sense when you go from alpha to launch without a beta. Though, I wouldn't have been upset if this current build of Odyssey had been released as a working beta. And I'm almost certain that there's a level of disdain within the walls of Frontier towards whomever made the call to launch in this state. Frontier has recently stated that a roadmap for development on Odyssey is on the way, but fans and players alike are maintaining the idea that development and patches will be rolling out for Odyssey all the way up until the launch of this expansion on consoles later this year. <clears throat> In its current state, the general sentiment from nearly every player I've interacted with is this. Don't do missions. Don't spend too much money. And don't engineer upgrades. Not yet. Just have fun with this new perspective. And continue to hold out hope that eventually this thing, this amusement park, that shouldn't have been opened yet, will get all of their attractions in order. What hurts the most is the promise, even in smallish doses. The escapism and inundation provided by the universe of Elite Dangerous is drastically multiplied with on-foot experiences. Just yesterday, I took a mission to turn on the power at an abandoned mining facility. I would need to bring the supplied power unit to the planet, find the facility, land, walk around on foot until I discover where the power building was, then restore it to working order. Job done. After finding the power building, I was met with locked doors because the facility didn't have power, duh. And I needed to cut through access panels, overload the door logs, and get inside. Once I entered the building, I was awash with a certain, nearly indescribable amount of fear and intenseness thanks to a pitch-black building and Frontier's consistently immersive sound design. It was spooky to say the least, but 
I felt badass, capable, and completely immersed in this moment. Once the power battery was back in the housing, I used an e-breach to reboot the main systems and to close the battery drawer. And I immediately started to panic, thinking about potential threats that are now on their way. The lights were on, the machinery was whirring, someone was bound to notice, so I bolted. Just as I was getting to the steps of my newly purchased Mamba, shout out to Zorgon Peterson, I turned to see three ships landing. Were they hostile? Were they friendlies? Maybe it was the miners returning to their town. Regardless of who was showing up now, I wasn't about to stick around and find out whether they liked me or not. So I hopped in my cockpit and I took off. Back to the interior station I accepted the job from and handed in the completed task at one of the dozen terminals inside. All in all, this journey from start to finish is the exact thing I want from Odyssey. Hell, it's near to the exact addition to the elite recipe most players want. Unfortunately, the exhilarating future this promises for a video game that many people already love means that every moment the game doesn't work as well as it should, sometimes in completely baffling ways, hits that much harder. There are far too many aspects of this expansion, as is, that do not function well, or properly at all. Including, but not limited to, not being able to do missions with other players, which is completely mind-boggling, the organization of teams, which used to be called wings, and the utterly disappointing optimization of frame rates and hardware inputs. While the entire package of Odyssey is just as baffling as it is game-changing, there's a steady wash of excitement in the community. Frontier is, hopefully, going to completely amp up the immersion and discovery within Elite Dangerous. I just hope that it doesn't take too much time to re-earn the trust and adoration of their fan base. As for the group of people that decided the game's most ambitious expansion to date should be released in its current state before it was ready, well, they should be ashamed of themselves. Look what happened to Cyberpunk 2077, CD Projekt Red. They are going to spend years trying to earn back the trust of their consumers. Fortunately, the destination feels clear as you dip into what Odyssey has to offer. And it's only a matter of time before all of the rides reopen and each amusement park attraction lives up to the hype that was sold to us. Until next time, 07 Commanders, good luck. Thank you so much for checking out the show. I really enjoy writing it and I enjoy reading it and editing it and talking to people about it after the show airs. Ah, uh, man, Odyssey. Elite Dangerous is such a, a potent thing f for me. It scratches a lot of itches. It has basically been my most valued time in games for quite a while, probably since Breath of the Wild. It, it it has so much that I want to learn and I want to do and it doesn't hold your hand and just lets you go out there and pick a direction and swim and I think that that's a grand and beautiful thing. The immersion that you feel uh, going out on foot. I mean, even before Odyssey, the immersion, immersion that you feel, felt in Elite Dangerous was almost unmatched by other games. Just sitting in your ship, turning off the engines floating there in space is one of the most glorious and beautiful moments in gaming that I've ever had. And for us to get so excited about Odyssey, participate in the alpha, hoping that Frontier takes all of this criticism and issues and fixes them before launch, only to be basically given the same version of the game as was in the alpha is heartbreaking but there's a lot of time and effort friends and family made inside the walls of Elite Dangerous so I don't think it's going to kill the series or the game I just hope that Frontier does the work that they have to do in order to re-earn and re-establish a trust with their fans 
even if it was some higher up in some boardroom full of stakeholders that decided to release the game it's so frustrating to have to defend this game that you love to a bunch of people who are trying it for the first time in its current state and you know i found myself promising that it will get better because i know the state that elite dangerous was in before odyssey was worth it and was beautiful and and functioned almost perfectly it obviously has its problems here and there but having to defend frontier's reputation for them to friends who are jumping in for the first time has been a little bit exhausting but i'm having a great time kind of floating around and exploring um and i hope you all do too elite dangerous means a lot to me and i really wanted to write about this experience um of the odyssey launch and i hope that you guys come and say hi to me on social media you can find me on twitter at wyatt Fawcett. it's the best place to say hi and chat video games feel free to share this show whether it's on google or apple or spotify or any of the platforms that take rss feeds from other sites and post them on there it would mean a lot to me I really love doing this and I am always excited to talk with people who listen to the show every week and I hope that next week will be another fun one. Till then, thank you so much for listening. I appreciate all of you and I will talk soon.